Hi guys, it's Martin here from Restronix and this video I'm going to show you how to repair a common fault with the Denzel Ordner which is fitted in a lot of Ford Focuses, C-Maxes, Mazda 6 and Volvos S40s, C70s and V50s. All of them 1.6, 1.8 and 2 litre diesel engines manufactured from about 03-04 onwards. Now let's move on and see now guys, how this is the Ordner in question. Now this particular one um, fits a Ford and Volvo 1.8 and 1.6 diesel engine. Um, very common problem with them, but actually what always happens with them is the rectifier, which is here at the back, diode blows and you have to replace the rectifier and 9 out of 10 times it solves the problem. Now sometimes what happens with them as well is the stator used to overheat, which is the winding on the middle that used to overheat. Uh, but we, I'm going to show you how to identify if it's a sta if it's a stator that causes the rectifier to go. So nothing to worry, just keep watching the video. And as well as that, guys, this Ordner really, this particular one, as I said, it's out of Ford and Volvo, but this particular type, which is Denso, it's fitted in a lot of a lot. It's fitted in nearly in every vehicle in Hondas and Toyotas most commonly now let's move on and i'm going to show you how to identify this is the alternator we're going to show you by looking at the sticker here now guys to make sure this is the alternator we're talking about the first thing you want to have a look at is the sticker and the first thing that you will notice is that on the sticker it's a square silvery sticker and on the sticker the first thing is you have a little barcode there on the side here and as well as that it says denso and it's 150 or 120A. That's basically the output of it. Um, the other thing to look at is the black cover at the very back, round black cover, which you've already seen. And if them, if you, if them two criteria are there, it means that's the alternator we are showing to you today. Now, while, um, while we are looking at this sticker now, it's worth to mention that if this sticker is anyway blackened or brown or burnt looking, it means the alternator have overheated and the stator is more than likely faulty which I'm going to show you how to change the stator as well in, in the second part of this video which I'm going to do in future now just to give you an idea I'm going to show you a burnt out stator now guys this is the stator of this alternator and this stator is basically burnt out it's very easy to tell because the sticker as you see is browned and it has shriveled a bit from the heat you can see the glue line here on the side and on the other side that the sticker was a bit bigger and shriveled from the temperature. If you have a look at the outside of your alternator and you see the sticker in state like that, it means that you need a stator as well as rectifier. But if your sticker is nice and silvery, it means it hasn't been overheated and it's more than likely only a rectifier problem. Now guys, the first step to dismantle that alternator is to remove the three eight knots here one here one there and one there remove them and the black cover basically pull out now guys our three knots are removed now just simply pull off the cover as you see put away safely and there's always a plastic bit there just simply an insulator for the positive now after this is removed we can see the rectifier here now the rectifier is simply held by few Phillips screws one here, one there, one here, and one here. But before we remove rectifier, we have to remove the brush box and the regulator. And as well as that, we have to disconnect the wires coming from the stator, which is very simple, and I'm going to show you how to do it in a second. But the first step is to remove two Phillipses holding the regulator itself and two Phillipses, one here and one there, holding the brush box. Remove them for Phillipses, and on top of that, I don't know, can you see it here? There's a little connection here. Now, basically what it is, this connection joins the regulator with the rectifier. But it's very simple to open it. Most of the time, what will happen is, if you get yourself a small screwdriver, it will break open because it's just a tiny bit fused and that's about it. Now guys, I've removed the 
one Phillips here and one Phillips there and that's, that, co that will cause the, our regulator and brush box assembly to come off now in some of the modes you have to remove one of them Phillipses but in this particular one the entire assembly will come off now, now our assembly is removed as you can see our brushes regulator and our connection which we opened and put it away now guys in this particular engineer what happened because there was diesel leaking on it the slip ring there is worn and that is the main problem but that actually happens very rarely to be honest that's the only alternator of them type which I've seen with this problem and it was because the diesel leaking onto it it doesn't really happen without any reason because this alternator as you can see is very oily but nonetheless I'm going to show you how to replace the rectifier which is 9 out of 10 times the cause of a problem now guys first of all remove our Phillips screws one here one here and one there they are only on three Phillipses holding it now and after we have this done next step is there are six wires coming out of stator joined with the rectifier they are paired in two there's two of them here there's two more there and another two there now the simplest way of disconnecting them I might say is to get yourself a hacksaw blade and just slice them you can see little bubbles there from fusing it you can slice them with the hacksaw blade just underneath the bubbles so the wires will become loose and our rectifier will simply pull up and that's what I'm going to do now guys as you can see I have them cut off and they're loose they're not joined to the rectifier anymore you can see there you can see the slice mark there and basically these ones are done and there's two pair two more pairs like that to do now guys all our connections are cut off and all we have to do is just lever it up a tiny bit and as you can see the rectifier comes off quite easily that's it might as well dump that and we are left with three pairs of connections one here one there and one there and it's time to fit new rectifier onto that now guys this is our new rectifier now them rectifiers um, they're all the same bar one basic difference this stud and this tip could be short or long or it could be M6 or in some of them as you can see the hole there it could be coming off from the top now it doesn't matter really which one you buy because all what it takes to change it is just simply unscrew that nut and knock the copper piece out and get the old one from the old rectifier and put back into it and you're going to end up with exactly the same connections that you had if it happens that you buy incorrect one or there's no correct one available they are all interchangeable because the bore inside is the same size in all of them even in the small ones there's still a bore of the m8 size in them so you don't have to worry if you buy a too big one or too small one now to fit the rectifier onto our alternator as you can see these two are in the symmetric positions and this one is the symmetric position as well now that the way our wires are fitting you can see them cross across each other and the one on the bottom and that's how our rectifier is going to fit them now there's one wire per one slot and all what you have to do just simply line them up and slide it down once this is you can see the wires which we have cut off coming out through the holes there can see them inside there now all we have to do is you just have to give it a shot of solder now when you're soldering always make sure that you heat it up nicely so the solder will flow in a tiny bit into the connection there solder all three pairs of them now guys I'm going to try to show you how to how, how it should look now first of all we want a bit of a heat to transfer into the connection feed the solder inside until you see the solder joining onto the connection 
and as you can see there we have a very nice joint on our connection now when you're soldering it the one important thing to take att pay attention to is that them two little connections per pair aren't joint they still have to be separate sometimes what I've seen happening is the blob of solder will actually make them join and if that happens the alternator won't charge now guys the one thing if you're not 100% sure or if you're not convinced that the rectifier is your problem just after pulling the black cover off have a good look at the diodes and often enough at the bottom of the diode you can see this one is pretty badly burnt out there and the one here is as well in comparison to this one where in this situation this one is pretty nice you can see no burnt marks pretty even surface there where the other ones the paint is peeling off them and simply if you take screwdriver any type of pressure is going to simply break them off now guys we are going to solder the, all the rest of them connections and after that we are going to put our reg and regulator assembly back on its place now guys our connections are soldered now why before you put your reg and regula reg regulator and brush box assembly back onto it you have to make sure that the brushes aren't in the way of slip rings otherwise the slip ring can break off the brushes now it's very simple to get that done as you can see at the back you have a hole there so all what you have to do is you can use your finger or if you can't reach it with your finger use a screwdriver or something like that you simply pull the brushes back with your finger and you can kind of feel as the needle or whatever you're using feeds through it and now our needle stops the brushes from coming out and we can safely put our assembly back onto the slip ring and you can be sure that the slip ring won't break off the brushes squeeze in this connection which is in the new rectifiers of course squeeze in this connection onto this little joint here and give it a shot of solder as well to get our plastic insulator which goes slides inside our bolt slide it in and now you can take your cover which will this open in here and this open in here they will always match the regulator and our positive bolt and just simply slide them over and once you have them slided all what you have to do is you just have to put your three nuts back onto the cover and tighten them and as you said if as i said if you've seen the diodes burnt and if you see the sticker is nice and shiny and it isn't gone you can be pretty sure that this is your problem this is going to solve your problem um, but if the sticker is brown or burnt or it's shriveled it more than likely means the stator is burnt out now guys I hope you enjoyed the video and remember that demo auxiliars are fitted in a lot of modern vehicles coming from about 0 3 to 0 4 most likely they fit to all the Japanese vehicles like Toyotas and Hondas but the very popular ones are the Ford Focus Ford C-Max and Volvo S40. They are the most popular at the moment and I, we've seen the most of them. And as you can see, this job is very easy to do. And in some situations, demo engineers could be extremely expensive, especially in all the Japanese vehicles. I hope guys you enjoyed the video. I hope you take on the job and the video helped you to do it. Please stay tuned for more and drop us a like if you like the video. Thanks.